I have a really exciting topic to share with you guys today. Um, I am incredibly excited about it. I put a lot of work into this presentation, and I hope you get a lot from it. Before I jump into that, though, we did this a little bit yesterday, but I wanted to do it right. I wanted to acknowledge my amazing team who has literally worked their butts off to make this event possible. None of us would be here right now without their continued hard work. Not only this weekend, which they have worked around the clock this weekend to give you guys the experience that you've had, to make the parties enjoyable and the experience that they've been, but for the past 12 months since we were here together, for those of you that were here at year one, they've been working and preparing to make this event what it is now. So I wanted to take a second. I actually want the four of them to come up here. And I want to give them a round of applause. Celeste, Carrie, Becky, Emma. Give it up. Give it up. The best. <laughs> None of this would be possible without these four amazing individuals right here. The best team in the, is, in the industry as far as I'm concerned. The best team in the business. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you guys. Thanks for taking time away from your families <laughs> to make sure that this event goes smoothly. And thank you for all that you do. This wouldn't be possible without all of you guys. So I am very grateful. I'm very appreciative. And um, yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do a picture. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, so I'm going to be talking to you guys today about selling. Who likes to sell? It just dawned on me about six months ago. I've spoken at a lot of events. I've talked about a myriad of topics. I've talked about growing, scaling. I've talked about content creation. I've talked about all these things. I've talked about branding, marketing. But you know what I've never talked about on stage? Sales. Sales. And that's a shame because a lot of agents in our business struggle with making a good presentation, with selling, and a lot of agents, frankly, get in their own way, yes or no? Yes. So let's jump right into this, okay? We're gonna be talking about how to become a master sales agent. I've sold a lot of insurance in my day. I've been a top producer for six carriers, not as many as Josh Young's, 42 or so, but I've been a top producer for a bunch of carriers. I've sold a lot of policies. I've sold over the phone. I've sold at the kitchen table. I've sold at events. I've sold in our office. I've sold in any environment you can think of. I've sold sitting on people's porches when they didn't want to let me in because they're a hoarder and they're embarrassed by their house. But I'm talking to them through the screen door because I'm there to make a sale. I'm there to bless these people, okay? So becoming a master sales agent talk about this. So first things first, I'm going to kind of get something out of the way. It's something I think everybody in this room already recognizes, but we are in the best industry on this planet. More millionaires are created every year in our industry than any other, and it's not by accident, okay? So we have the vehicle. We all have the opportunity to have the vehicle. Now, you can take a lot of things you've learned over the last day and a half or so about getting in front of clients, marketing, and that, truthfully told, is probably the most difficult thing that an agent actually goes through in their day-to-day -day basis. It's just, how do I see more people? But we've talked about that a lot over this weekend so far. What are you doing when you get in front of the people 
to give yourself the best opportunity to help them on their policy. Okay? We're going to talk about this. All right, let's face reality. Sales is ugly but necessary. How many do things every day you don't want to do in your business? Anybody that says they don't, I don't believe them. <laughs> they're not selling. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. Josh, Josh Young's, they're not selling nothing. I take out the trash at my house because I don't want trash in my house. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy sales any more than I enjoy taking out the trash, but I do it so I don't have a house full of garbage. Sales is necessary. And the longer some of you tell yourselves, I hate sales, or I don't want to be a salesperson, or I don't want to be too pitchy, this or that, or this or that, piggybacking off of yesterday, limiting mindset. For a second, I want everybody to say, I am a salesperson. And because I'm a salesperson, I help people. That's it. That's it. That is the reality. Most salespeople sell wrong, though, constantly. I was no exception. This is me. Funny story. About a year ago, I posted this picture in, the, in a six-figure Medicare agent, now seven-figure Medicare agent. And I was trying to have some fun. And I said, if this guy can make it in this business, anybody can. And it looks so much not like me that I start getting criticized for bullying. <laughs> There's people in our group reporting it to the admin, me, <laughs> that I'm picking on this poor kid. Someone comments and they say, this poor kid, he's just trying to make it. I'm like, boy, was that true. Boy, was that true. I did not come into this business with special communication skills. I did not come into this business with earth-shattering confidence. And I did not come into this business with like some imposing, like, I still don't have this, imposing, you know, like, presence. It just is not, it wasn't what it was. This guy... A, a, a 125 pounds soaking wet. It's been said before. Um, but my point is, this guy made it in this business. This is 21-year-old Christian Brindle right here. 21 years old. Trying to make cold calls for Medicare supplement business. Getting shot down over and over and over and over again. But you know what that did for me? It made me the salesperson I am today. If, you want to, if, you, if, you're, if you're working with agents, lots, lots of people in this room are established, you're bringing new agents into the business. There's no better training for anybody than reps. If I want to get buffer, and I don't want to look so skinny up here, I go to the gym and I do my reps, and I'm going to get better. It's going to get easier. Sales is the same. And that's literally all I did. And over my, I have no idea how many sales calls I've made. I have no idea how many appointments I've made. Tens of thousands, I, have, I don't know. But I learned some things along the way about how to sell the right way, so we're going to talk about that. All right, so, yes, establish this. Anybody can be a master salesperson if they implement the right strategies and put their reps in. Anybody. All right, so first things first, it, we, if, if, if you have a sales problem, you first have to uh, identify the problem. You can't fix a problem if you don't acknowledge the problem. Nobody can tell you you have a problem if you don't acknowledge it first. I feel like we're in an AA meeting right now. But understand that there's a good possibility that your sales process might have some issues that you might not be aware of. 
The average agent is constantly making the mistake of trying to show their beneficiaries how much they know. You're spending 10 minutes on part A and part B. Mr. Prospect, the part A deductible is this. I don't know what it is. I couldn't tell you the exact number right now. I don't need to. You're spending all this time on irrelevant information. You're going into part A does this. Oh, in skilled nursing, it's zero dollars for days one through 20, but then from days 21 and on is blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna tell you why this matters. I'm gonna tell you why you wanna simplify what you're talking about. Too much irrelevant information. What are some other things? You're confusing them. You're trying to show them how knowledgeable you are. You're trying to show them what an expert you are, but you're not making it easier for them. You're talking to people about Irma that aren't Irma people. You're talking to people about Medicaid and DSNP plans and just explaining what they are to people that aren't on Medicaid. Why? It's because there's a natural tendency that you want to establish with your member that you're the authority, right? That you're the expert, that you know so much. However, I believe it's actually hurting your sales process because you're not getting enough of the information that they need through. Statistic I read the other day. Most people that read books, if you read a book, it's a good chance you're gonna read, you're gonna retain about 30% of it, no matter how much you pay attention. And your sales process is incredibly similar. There's a finite amount of attention span that you have with your members. And you don't want to waste that on irrelevant information. So, let's talk about the solution. We need to adopt a strategy of keep this shit simple. <laughs> Say it with me. Keep this shit simple. We'll bleep that on the recording. <laughs> Beep. All right. The beneficiary in the Medicare world, and I would argue not even just the Medicare world, but the beneficiary in the Medicare world doesn't buy who knows the most. They buy from whoever makes it easier for them. Yes or no? There are so many people I know in our business that know so much more about Medicare than I do. But has that hurt me? No, not at all. Now, I know my stuff. Don't get me wrong. I got my Medicare chops. But it's not vomiting information all over your member that's going to win you the sale, that's going to get you their trust, that's going to get you their business. It's how easy do you make this process that seems overwhelming for them? How simple do you make it? Oftentimes, less is more. I have a theory. You have 15 to 20 minutes with your client of you're doing a presentation with them before they check out. 15 to 20 minutes. So if, if you're doing hour and a half appointments, I talked to a guy the other day, two and a half hour appointments on average. I'm like, damn. I'm like, how's your closing ratio? He's like, I normally need like, you know, three, four meetings with them. I'm like, I can tell why. You just told me your problem, bro. In today's day and age, right, how many would agree that the previous five to 10 years have lowered our attention spans? Sure as for me. Instant gratification. I get on TikTok and I see Eric Fierro doing a dance. I'm like, yeah, but it's only gonna last like 60 seconds maximum. Then I'm off to the next thing. Instagram, social media, and guess what? Your clients are the same exact way. They're on social media. They have smartphones, most of them. So it's a societal thing that our attention spans have been shrunk. So understand this. 
And be conscious of this when you're presenting and meeting with your clients that your time is limited and you should be recording your sales process and figuring out what can I cut out to make sure that I'm only talking about stuff they need to know. And I'm actually gonna go through my sales process in a second here. I'm gonna show you exactly what I go through and what I don't go through. Now, I'm not saying you leave things out that they absolutely need to know, but I guarantee you, if your presentation's running a bit long, that if you truly look at it, there's a lot of things you're probably like, probably don't need to go over that. It's probably not important unless I find out later that they meet this criteria, or maybe I ask a question, or whatever the case might be. And again, anything after 20 minutes, I would say, is gonna be okay? When I talk to someone after 20 minutes, that's what I hear. I only imagine that's what they hear too. Okay, so here is my sales process. Now, before I put this uh, chart up, I will say this is not CMS approved or compliant, so don't <laughs> use it. Get, there's plenty that look just like it that are CMS approved. This is just for you guys, you guys only. Look familiar? I can tell you this. There have been a lot of people in our business that have tried a lot of ways to present MedSup versus Medicare Advantage to a senior. And I guarantee you, there is no better way to do it than a T-chart. I challenge anybody, no better way. Why? Because it's easy. It's simple. So what does my sales process look like? Well, if I'm working with a person that's aging in, let's say they're turning 65, this is what we're trying to get them to wrap their heads around. Because what are they thinking about? They're thinking about part A, part B, part C, part D, part plan G. They're thinking about all these things they've gotten in the mail. We all hear it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But what I'm trying to get them to think about is they have two ways to go, and both ways have pros and cons. I do not push them one way or the other. I explain the pros and cons in 15 to 20 minutes, and I let them choose, and I go that direction. I'm telling them enough to make a decision. So, how do I explain this? Well, first we'll tell them about A and B but I'm not spending five minutes on it. I'm spending very little time on part A and B. Why? Because, let's face it, no matter what they get, they don't have just part A and part B. So how that coverage works alone in the weeds is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's not what they're gonna be dealing with, no matter what they get from you. So here's what I'm telling them about part A, part B. I'm saying, with Medicare, Everything centers around what I would call original Medicare. Original Medicare works like two pieces of a puzzle that fit together to give you medical coverage. You have Medicare Part A or Medicare Part B. You put them together, they cover medical coverage. They both cover different areas, but you put them together, you have coverage for medical bills. Now, they don't give you 100% medical coverage. They have some deductibles. They leave behind about 20%. But that, and it's an unlimited 20%, that's the biggest hole you have. It doesn't cover prescriptions, doesn't cover dental vision hearing. So that's what Medicare is on its, by itself. It's very limited coverage, and it's dramatically encouraged that you pick something up to go with it. I'm not talking about it again. I mentioned the Part B premium, of course. Now, pushback I get on this. Well, how do you know someone's not Irma? This is what I'll say. Keep it simple. I'm going to say, in 2023, the Medicare Part B premium is $164.90 a month. If your income is dramatically high, it can be more. If your income is dramatically low, it can be less. And guess what they'll do? Boom. Michael, brother Weller. Um, they'll tell you how much they make. They will tell you if they think they might be in that situation. But how many people are in that situation? not the majority. 
So why are you spending so much time on it in your presentation? It's irrelevant. It's unnecessary. And you're using up your 15 to 20 minutes of their attention span, of what they're actually going to remember. They're going to remember things that don't apply to them. Then we go through MedSup. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, because 15 to 20 minutes, I don't have that much time left. You guys know a little bit about this. So I'm not going to go through that. You guys get the picture. I'm going to quickly move through these items. I'm going to go through the pros and cons. I'm not going to talk about carriers. I'm not going to talk about plans. I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. I'm going to tell them just enough to make a decision. I'm going to go with it. But I need to be in that time block. I have to be in that time block. I have had so many clients over the years that I've sat down with that are turning 65, that are clients now. What I routinely hear from clients is, I've met with six people, and I felt like I got more confused every time I met with somebody. I met with you, and you made it so easy, so simple. That's what you should be hearing from your clients. If you're not, there's something wrong with your process. You're, 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 you're talking about too much. There is such a thing about talking about too much. Some of you guys are talking to your clients like you're training them to be agents. <laughs> yes or no? You, you're talking to them like they need to go out and sell the shit. They just need to remember enough to remember why they bought what they bought and why they like what they like. Educate enough to pick a side. Go with that side, period. Cut stuff out. Cut stuff out and watch your conversions go through the roof. I promise you. Some of you guys are also not putting yourselves in positions to be successful. If you're getting leads, if you have traffic coming in, whatever it might be, there's some things that really salespeople in general do that need to be stopped. Now, some of it is stuff you probably heard over and over and over again. So some of this, I'm sure, will not be new to you. But... We all need constant reminders. Did you know that 35 to 50% of sales go to whoever contacts them first? So, why is it such a good idea to get with people eight months out or seven months out when they're turning 65? Because you have a much better chance of getting there first. Great book by uh, Grant Cardone, if you've never read it. If you're not first, you are last. This is true. Also, if you're buying leads, if you're getting leads, you need to be contacting them, man, right away. My rule of thumb with leads, if they go 24 hours and you haven't called them yet, the chance of you closing the sale goes down by half. And it just gets worse and worse from there. It doesn't get better. That's why lead companies sell age leads for like 50 cents because they're basically useless at that point. After a couple weeks, month, certainly two months or more. Translation, call your leads early and right when they come in. Did you know that 80% of sales require at least five follow-ups? How many people are doing five follow-ups? You have a system for it. Saw some nods, good. If you're not, you need to be. This might sound basic, but this next step might show you that most people aren't following this. Forty-eight percent of salespeople never make a single follow-up attempt. So what does that mean? It means the salesperson is getting in their own way. The other thing is, you have to be an emotionless machine in this business. I've been doing a lot of trainings lately, and it seems like just out of coincidence, I've been doing a lot of trainings for newer agents. One thing I've been having to remind them, and I think a lot of times us experienced agents need to be reminded of this as well, you have to be center on your emotions when you're trying to be a good salesperson. You can't get too high, you can't get too low. Because if you get too high, as soon as something goes bad, what happens? You crash and burn. It's ugly. I promise. That's happened to me. 
Wouldn't recommend it. If you get too low, you get defeated, man. Knocks you off your mojo. You lie in bed for a couple days. Get depressed. All that stuff. You have to mentally be disciplined and control your emotions. Stay here. Even keel. And you need to be here because if you're not here, you're not going to be able to get to five follow-ups. You're going to get discouraged. Be like, well, they never answer the phone on the third one. I'm not even going to try. 60% of buyers say no four times before they say yes. In my office, when I'm working with an agent, I'm always telling them to get multiple no's. Don't just let them barrel those over you. Don't let them kick you off the phone with one no. Come back to the beginning. Run through it again. Word it a different way. But get multiple no's. Don't just give up with the first no. How are you controlling your tone and matching their energy? This is one that I think is really important. And I think this helped me tremendously become the salesperson that I became. One thing I'm really good at is I, mat, I mirror my prospect, their energy, right? If, I, if I'm dealing with a guy that's, you know, super negative, I'm, I'm going to get negative with him because he's more comfortable with me. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, that, that's, that, that fucking sucks. I agree. If I'm with an upbeat person, I'm going to get upbeat. If they're a Republican, I'm a Republican. If they're a Democrat, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> Mirror your members. Now, I'm not saying lie to people. I'm totally kidding on that one. But I'm a troublemaker. Um, one thing that always happened to me living in Utah is there's a segment of the population that if you're not, if you're not LDS, they won't buy from you. People ask me all the time, how did, we overcome, how did I overcome that? Because I'm not LDS. Everybody in this room thinks I am but I'm not. Um, but, but that's a thing, right? You could be in an area where Jehovah's Witness are really prominent. You know, they might not buy from you if you're not you know, part of their tribe. How do you get through that? People, people still ask me all the time. They're like, are you LDS? Are you part of this? Are you part of that? I simply say, oh, I'm religious. Don't push back after that. Don't ask me why. It works. I promise. Try it in the field next time you get a super religious person. Because if I just come out and be like, oh, no, I'm not that. I'm this. And I go, go big expl explanation. I'm probably going to lose them. <laughs> They're going to go find somebody that is in their tribe. There's a segment of people that do that. But how are you matching their tone and their energy? People buy from people that they're comfortable with. Familiarity. And if you're matching them, you're making them much more comfortable with you. 57% of buyers would be more likely to buy if they weren't pressured. So some of you guys are running home and watching Wolf of Wall Street. You know? And, and watching these like hard closes and everything like that. Our business is a relationship business. Yes or no? So how does that relationship go if it starts off with you pushing them like hell into some product that they don't understand? I guarantee you, if you implement some of these sales tactics, if you keep your presentation short, if you talk to your members about things they need to know and you make it easy for them, the presentation does the closing for you. You shouldn't need to hard pressure somebody. Usually if somebody's undecided, there's two reasons. It's because they either don't trust you, you have not built that trust for them, or it's because they didn't understand something. They're still confused about something. They're too embarrassed to say so. So you need to go back to your sales process, see where that happened. You need to record your sales process. Listen to it over and over again. Fine tune it to where it's a nuclear weapon. There's an, I, I put up my full Turning 65 presentation on YouTube um, about a year ago. It, it got a lot of views, a lot of attention, a lot of good feedback. 
Um, there's an agent earlier this year reached out to me, and um, he was struggling. And I don't know who, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't tied to us. I've never talked to him, anything like that. But he was struggling with the sales process. He was going into houses. He was going into appointments and just getting shot down. He was just having trouble explaining things. He was confusing people. Whole nine yards. We've all seen that with agents, right? And takes that video, watches it over and over and over again, memorizes it almost word for word. This guy had dedication. I love this guy. And he turned his sales around. His sales went up. He sold more in a month after implementing that than he had sold in the previous year. And why? It's because he simplified his process. Simple, simple, simple. But at the same time, your presentation should be closing for you. It's your best closer. Shouldn't need some fancy close. They should, be at, they should be begging you to enroll when you're done. They're going to go, how do I get this started? Most of my sales end that way. I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, i still got a few more things you need to know. We'll get there. So in my opinion, in 2023, people are not down with the used car salesman tactics. The pressure, the hard pressure the pushing. You should be trying to make it as easy for them as possible. And when you do that, and they understand it, they're going to be stoked that they understand it because they've been confused for the past year since they started getting mail and started seeing commercials. So remember this. If you take anything away from this presentation, it's not the person that knows the most that gets the client, it's the person that makes it the easiest for them. That's it. That's our whole business. Of course, yes, we have to gain the client's trust in order to get them to trust you and make it less complicated. Easy, easy, easy. Yes, and lastly, we do a good presentation, effective, it will do the closing for you. Pressure is not needed. And that's what I got for you guys today. So I hope you guys like that. I hope you got something out of that. And without further ado, let's get Mr. Tony Merwin back up here and keep the show running. <laughs>